Hi, I'm Taylor Ryko, and I will be going over hackers and threats. I will be covering an overview of hackers and threats, the history behind them, current trends, challenges that we face, and then wrap it up with new findings and recommendations. The dangers are all around us. There are many threats out there in the world, such as terrorism, dictatorship, and the spread of nuclear weapons. In the 21st century, there are hackers who are just as dangerous, if not more. Everyone just assumes hacker in this negative light. However, there are good kinds of hackers too. Not many people know what hackers can all do with their tactics and techniques. There are many adverse effects, more than people know. Hackers will only get stronger as time progresses because of this evolutionary track technology is on. And that's why I'm widely interested in hackers and the threats they pose. The term originated around 1200 BC, however it didn't always have that same meaning. Back then, it was used to describe cutting in a rough and violent way, often without aiming exactly. It wasn't until the late 20th century where the term was used in association with technology. Then finally in 1975, there was an appendage to the term hacker, a malicious meddler who tries to discover sensitive information by poking around. Nowadays, the term hacker doesn't always hold a negative connotation. For instance, a security hacker uses technical knowledge of bugs or vulnerabilities to exploit weaknesses in computer systems to access data that otherwise wouldn't have permission to view. The first internet hacker was Robert Morris in 1989, which was a denial of service attack caused by a worm he deployed. All he wanted to do with this worm was to highlight security flaws. However, it unfortunately went sideways when the worm replicated due to a fault code and caused extensive damage that lasted for days. The biggest hacks in history, with number one on the list being Yahoo. In 2013, all of their 3 billion user accounts were compromised, which included names, birthdays, and e email addresses, passwords, security questions, and their answers. The second largest was 2019, against First American Corporation, with 900 million accounts being compromised. It wasn't clear as to whether or not these files were hacked, but all the sensitive data was left vulnerable to cyber attacks, which included social security numbers and bank account information. The third largest hack was Marriott, in occurring from 2014 to 2018, with around 500 million accounts impacted. A hacker gained unauthorized access and the breach wasn't discovered for that whole time collecting all that sensitive data. Ransomware has been and continues to be a current trend. Black hat hackers, which are those who execute those their actions illegally, somehow find a way into organization networks and holds their data for a ransom. Attackers exploit businesses by gaining initial access, performing reconnaissance, and then moving laterally. If there were more focus to protect and secure this, then hackers would become more limited and restricted. One of the most current ransomware victims was a California-based company called Insomniac Games, which is a subsidiary of Sony Interactive Entertainment. The hacker group, Rysita, leaked employee information and future game plans. They are running an auction for the sensitive information starting at $2 million in Bitcoin. Rysita has hacked other companies, however this is their latest victim. Other trends that hackers use are initial access tradecraft. So this is essentially how an attacker deploys their threat. This could be anywhere from a phishing email, macros in a document, malvertising, search engine optimization, window installer files, and infected USB drives. There are many different avenues of approach for an attacker. With remote work for businesses becoming more prevalent, the usual network perimeter of a company becomes less and less important. 
so hackers are trying to steal credentials because it is easier to conceal via an IP address that is different like other remote users. One way of doing this is targeting remote employees and gain initial access through their multi-factor authentication. Users will accept a ghost multi-factor authentication, which allows the adversary to gain access and exfiltrate data. Data theft is a result of impersonating employee or a customer. Identity theft is a huge concern as hackers found a way to intercept multi-factor authentication requests. On a more positive note, what do hacker hackers do that give a less threatening connotation? There are ethical hackers, which are people who are hired on by a company to perform a security assessment and minimize the risks, also known as a blue hat hacker. They help identify and address security vulnerabilities before they can be exploited for malicious purposes. There's also a risk mitigation. By identifying those vulnerabilities, they can patch them, which reduces the risk of data breaches, financial losses, and reputational damage that can result from successful cyber attacks. By doing these assessments, the hacker can uncover security flaws which assists the company with compliance and other regulations. Lastly, and probably the most important, is cybersecurity awareness. This will provide secure online behavior, more protection for the company, financial security, and increase protection against threats. The main challenge businesses face is due to the constant advancement of technology. It is hard to stay ahead of all the attackers. With a great cybersecurity program, they do their best to patch vulnerabilities and set up a secure perimeter. There is a lack of cybersecurity awareness, so it is easier to get through from an attacker aspect. The problem with cybersecurity attacks is that a vast majority of breaches are caused by human error. There are social engineering, phishing emails, and other tactics they can use against an ignorant user. Threat actors or criminals will exploit an organization or an individual through any vulnerability they can find. They are always looking for the weakest link within the system. There are a lot of challenges surrounding hacking and the threats that it poses, one being the ethical concern. Privacy is a huge issue. At what point are the hackers crossing the line into the ethicality of it all? Another issue is that these adversaries are usually across borders, so it is particularly hard for law enforcement and regulatory bodies to coordinate together. Although the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency coordinates with different agencies in the United States, there are still concerns around the world with different jurisdictional issues and legal frameworks. Hackers are taking newer technologies and adopting them as part of their attack vector, specifically artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and data poisoning. AI deepfakes which are digitally altered videos, have a deadly impact on an organization. For example, there was a video circulating a couple years ago that digitally altered President Obama giving a public address. The frightening part of this all is that by using AI, those individuals out there who are ignorant of current technology will wholeheartedly believe the video. There haven't been many findings of hackers using quantum computing as their threat landscape. However, once mastered, this has the ability to shut down companies. Cryptography, which is the key to cybersecurity, is unmatched by quantum computing. If hackers start incorporating quantum computing attacks, the world as we know will start to crumble unless organizations enable their systems to use quantum computing instead of cryptography. The ultimate goal of data poisoning is to tamper or corrupt the data used to train machine learning and deep learning models. By poisoning the data, the attacker can easily manipulate any algorithm. Now, 
there are a lot of surefire ways to stay more secure and protecting a, protected against hackers. Using just a password, a hacker can use brute force to guess it. However, if you have more than just a password, it becomes extremely hard. You can use multi-factor authentication. This could mean a code sent to your phone via text or call, or you could use biometrics. Utilizing a password manager ensures that you aren't using the same password for every account that you have. You can store the unique passwords in a secure password manager. Use it encrypted services means when you are sending information to a company or individual is better protected against surveillance and it won't be accessible if your device gets lost or stolen. Another recommendation is to keep your products up to date. Companies are always finding new bugs and deploying fixes to the applications, phones, or computers. Lastly, always be aware. It is very important to learn how to spot a phishing email because clicking on any links or downloading any files could quickly become a nightmare. Now, going through all of this, it's not saying that if you do all of these things that no hacker is going to steal your data or invade your privacy. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is if you do these things, you are minimizing the risk of that happening by a lot.